speed around the bucket. Uh, I think this is one of the greatest games of all time. My overall impression for those interested in it is that this is a fantastic DLC. 9.9 .9 out of 10. I think it's possible that this is the best DLC ever made by human hands. Elden Ring is by every metric an astounding work and is sure to be regarded by many as a new pinnacle for a studio that has already delivered some of the greatest video games ever made. Can you give an overall review of Elden Ring? I think the game is one of the best games I've ever played. It's a 10 out of 10 game. I want something else before Elden Ring 2, or at the absolute bare minimum, I want something else before another medieval fantasy or even an open world style game. And after presenting the overwhelming critical acclaim and the high reviews, and it being from software's best selling product, that may sound a little crazy. But trust me, I do. And I don't think I'm alone with that statement. So let's do what all smart people do and bring up some data. I gave my audience a voting poll asking if they want Elden Ring 2 directly after Elden Ring or would they rather see FromSoft tackle something else and they have their next big open world game come a bit later. And what were the results? Well, both times my audience voted for something else instead of a direct sequel. And in both of these polls, you can see that the results were somewhat skewed. These polls weren't even close to a 50-50. No, from the votes that I have tallied at least, the overwhelming majority of voters would rather have something else before Elden Ring 2. I wish that I could say that I was shocked and didn't see that coming, but oddly enough, I would have been more shocked at the polls close to a 50-50 or even leaning towards wanting a direct sequel. And the same people who voted in that poll also most likely voted on the fact that Elden Ring is their favorite FromSoft game, or at worst, it's in their top three. So, 90% of my audience voted Elden Ring in their top 3 Souls games, and that was before the launch of the DLC, and close to 60% believe that Elden Ring is their favorite from software game. And with all the information that I've gathered, it seems like the overwhelming majority of people, or at the bare minimum, my audience, do not want Elden Ring 2 or an Elden Ring-like game as the direct sequel. I hope you find that information fascinating because there is a lot to say on this matter. Let's start off with some glorious history. As many of you may know, From Software has been around for quite some time now. They've been making games long before Miyazaki was even employed there. And their very first game, Kingsfield, was released in 1994, which is older than me and probably older than most of you listening. But From Software was established in 1986, and what reads from their company website says, Development of Business Application Software. Now, I am obviously not suggesting that they should return to their roots, but their history is quite fascinating when they entered the gaming sphere, because they made so many games that don't even come close to resembling modern from software. Now, that's all true except for the first two IPs they ever made, Kingsfield and Armored Core. It's really amazing how these two are still embedded within from software. Armored Core took a backseat for around a decade, but made a somewhat miraculous comeback last year, and Miyazaki has stated that he takes inspiration from Naotoshi, who worked on the original Kingsfield game. So, why have I spewed from software lore in this video? I'm not a lore channel, so what's going on? It's that when you analyze from software history, you can see they are not afraid to take these creative risks and try something completely new. And it's quite respectable how greed hasn't taken over Miyazaki or from software as a whole. And that concept alone, I will touch on a bit near the end of this video. The atmosphere, ideas, and themes you can take advantage of are limitless with pretty much any setting you decide to place your foot in. I praised Shadow of the Earth Tree for not following the basic tropes and structures that medieval settings usually present. We are still in a fantasy setting after all, so of course we saw dragons, knights, and the other ideas that are commonly associated with fantasy, but there was a lot to throw us off guard too. The part of the map with the aging untouchables and some of the bosses feel more unique with how different they are. The Dancing Beast Lion is a perfect example of this. It's not a basic wolf or beast type enemy, instead it stands as something completely unique. FromSoft have done a pretty good job at this sort of thing where they don't completely lean into the fantasy side and only the fantasy side. But no matter how you look at it, this is FromSoft's fifth game in this type of setting and Elden Ring is essentially open world Dark Souls. This is definitely calculated from FromSoft and Miyazaki as that's probably what he is most comfortable with and likes working on and being open world Dark Souls is not a bad thing. In fact, it's still something that I welcome. I love Elden Ring and I love Dark Souls. In many ways, Elden Ring feels like the peak of my imagination that I had in Dark Souls and FromSoft let me splash around in that water. It's open world Dark Souls, how can you not love bathing within the Scarlet Rod of Kaled and gawking at the beauty of the Altus Plateau? It's something that every fan of the series thought about at least once, 
open world Dark Souls, and now that it's here, I am asking for something else. Reconciling these thoughts has made me realize why Sekiro was such a hit for me, and it's that it was so different and so unexpected that I loved it so, so very dearly. Are you getting tired of the word so yet? This gravitational pull towards fantasy is undeniably on purpose. Within that setting, Miyazaki can also draw the most from Berserk since he's such a huge fan of that manga. So, just to be clear, I am not saying this setting should be a shut case now since that would be less than ideal for most people. Miyazaki himself has said that Elden Ring isn't even his ideal fantasy game, so that all but confirms there's more to come. In regards to what Miyazaki said, there is still gas in the tank with this setting. From Software have set themselves on a golden pedestal with their games if they take advantage of it. From Software's Souls Combat has evolved enough to warrant their fantasy games continuing with the open world trend and their unique spin-off games can be a traditional style they've done in the past. Absolutely no one can deny that their first open world take was a smash hit. But just because it was a hit, I don't think that automatically warrants every one of their Souls games to be open world. Making Souls and Souls-like games that are a different setting with completely different mechanics will undoubtedly keep things fresh. I obviously can't say what it's like to work in an industry-leading game studio, but I highly doubt the whole studio wants to stay in the water they are comfortable splashing around in. That very well could lead to faster employee burnout and making the team feel like they've mostly stagnated. Games like Sekiro and Bloodborne were deviations from their comfort zone, and they without a doubt delivered with those games. From soft delivering with those titles is a win for everyone, if you ask me. If we were to get too much of one thing, and that one thing being the soul's combat and theme, we would eventually yearn for change, even if FromSoft keeps giving us gold like they have been for a while now. I think most of us would be open to another change of scenery, as the possibilities are limitless. And if you're not open for a change of scenery, well, let me just throw up a pattern for you to soak in. After Dark Souls 1, Miyazaki went on to make Bloodborne, then we went to Dark Souls 3, here we have Sekiro, and finally we arrive at the Lands Between. If this pattern is not making complete sense to you, well, Miyazaki always has a side, spin-off project he does when he's not doing the Souls combat. This could be taken a step further with the Rossine, but I don't own a VR headset and I get motion sickness, so I've never played that game. So if you are not ready for some change, then you can hope this pattern breaks, but I wouldn't get your hopes up. A new atmosphere will also breed a diversion from what's expected of combat. I want to see my due diligence first by saying that it's impressive how FromSoft have been able to refine a combat system from 2009 into something that can handle Elden Ring's speed and flow. This is a combat system where in its early days the best way to handle mob enemies was to strafe around them with a shield and backstab them to death. If there is one thing you can take away from the Souls combat, it's that small refinements can truly go a long way. And a long way we have gone, but ultimately everything has a limit. I think that limit is something we've all been afraid to admit, but we may be close to the cap of what FromSoft can achieve with their Souls Combat. Let's take a look at the Souls Combat cousin, which would be Bloodborne. Bloodborne is Souls Combat with a few twists and nothing more. It has a lot of the same trimmings of Souls Combat, but its few changes makes the combat far more memorable for me. The pace of Bloodborne is faster than Dark Souls 3 and Elden Ring, which makes the game to be an offensive type game. There are essentially zero defensive tools and the game wants you to trade and become aggressive with its rally heal system. The notion that FromSoft can play with can lead to fresh possibilities that Souls Combat simply can't achieve. I always like to loop that back to the Orphan of Koss. The Orphan of Koss is so fast and relentless that hit trading was what I found to be the funnest and most viable option when fighting him. He offers an experience that Zero Souls combat bosses offer where the two of you beat the ever living shit out of each other in an all out fight. And the longer the Souls combat is at the front and center, the faster it gets. You don't even have to look ahead, let's go back in time for a second. Dark Souls 1 and 2's combat feel more sluggish with an overall slower pace. Dark Souls 1 and 2 simply did not have many enemies performing moves where the enemy AI attacks 5 or 6 times in a row at the speed of lightning. If you were to show somebody in 2011 that Waterfowl was going to be in the same combat system that Dark Souls 1 is in, then they would understandably and rightfully so call bullshit. Elden Ring in general has flashed the idea of FromSoft not knowing how to increase the game's difficulty without throwing shit at the wall and hoping it sticks. Waterfowl has been talked about to death, but I honestly feel like this is a symptom of needing to make something harder because it's all been done before. Learning how to dodge Waterfowl solo was not accounted for, and Shadow of the Earth Tree has the same issue with Radon's X Sword Slash. 
I have only seen people dodge this move on a light roll, and I have not seen a single person dodge this with a medium roll. Shadow of the Earth Tree has been out for a little while now, and it seems like FromSoft has no intention of fixing it, so it can be dodged by all builds. Even if they do fix it, I don't know how the DLC even shipped with that move. During my 8 hour period with Radon, I didn't dodge that move once. If you do happen to disagree with what I said, which is completely fine, and you think that Waterfowl or Radon's moves are fine, then I still think taking a break from the roll attack system would be a welcome break for everyone. FromSoft can let that system take a back seat while they focus on something else front and center, but I also wonder how it can be improved any further. Each time they do this combat system, they change something about it for better or worse. Even if FromSoft doesn't have any plans to radically update the combat anymore, I still think that it would be best if they shoved it to the side for a few years and let people start to miss something that we all love. Let's just say Elden Ring 2 was their next Souls game and FromSoft didn't update the system any further as they view it to be in its perfected form. That may cause the game to suffer from being too similar to what we just had, and it may just be seen as another expansion or Elden Ring 1.5. Forcing us to go back to Bloodborne or Sekiro will then force the Souls combat to feel fresh even if it's not. I can't help but think back to the idea of questioning if we are at the peak of what we can accomplish in this system. I have been thinking for a little while that we are at the peak difficulty and I still mostly stand by that. Sure, every enemy can be made even harder with two waterfowls instead of one, but reasonably speaking I don't think I was too far off. People complained about Shadow of the Earth Tree being too hard and what I partially think the issue was is that it was always hard, not too hard. There wasn't a gimmick boss to ease the difficulty, everything was back to back challenging. Regardless, just like the theme of this video, I want a different combat system to splash around in for our next game, even if it's a Bloodborne spinoff that's similar to Souls Combat. As I have stated, the simple act of unlocking rally heals and increasing the speed of the game unlocks different ways the game can be designed. I'm also a bit of a troglodyte and I don't do ranged combat in these games. Bloodborne's melee combat to this day is still more enjoyable to me over Elden Ring's combat and FromSoft can refine it like they have with the current system. I'm not even sure how FromSoft can really evolve the Souls combat from here on out. They can definitely evolve horse combat as horse combat was just really fucking bad in Elden Ring, but it may get to the point where combat has stagnated and they just give us more toys to play with. At the bare minimum, I don't find it coincidental that Elden Ring's bosses had a lot of criticism thrown their way at this stage of Souls combat. Not only were the bosses fast and relentless, but people are eventually going to yearn for changes as time passes. With how long of an experience Elden Ring and the past Souls games are, there's only so much enjoyment you can get from the Souls combat experience. From software can definitely force change in the boss system, even if it's as simple as bringing back boss weaknesses like we had in Dark Souls 1 with cutting off boss tails, but I don't think that's necessarily enough. I don't even think I would want that system back. They did try to evolve boss fights in Elden Ring with Moog's Crystal Tear and with the Blasphemous Claw, but I don't like those systems at all. I think from soft, forcing some time off of this system and doing a new system will rejuvenate our desire for the old ways. Alright, I'll address the giant in the room and talk about the open world. Exploration in the open world was the hot topic surrounding Elden Ring for most of its life cycle. If you went into Elden Ring as a Souls fan, you didn't have much to worry about regarding the combat and bosses, but how the open world would fare was everyone's lingering question. We've seen other game studios try their hand at open worlds, and it's always abundantly clear when they had no idea how to make it interesting. So they did the open world sin, where they mindlessly shove filler bullshit in every corner of the map, making it feel more engineered and checklisty than immersive. Ubisoft falls into this category with most of their open worlds being nothing more than junk food games. From Software's first attempt was better than most, but it came with its fair share of setbacks. Luckily for them, they refined their combat system to a perfected state, so they had that as a pretty good anchor. Elden Ring still has the best combat in any open world that i played, and it's not even close. Although, combat can only carry so much, and Elden Ring does have its setbacks. You have the catacombs that reach a point lower than Breath of the Wild shrines, reused enemies and bosses that stack on top of each other, and Elden Ring's late game exploration being a bloated mess because FromSoft didn't stop feeding themselves. What impresses me the most with Shadow of the Earth Tree is how FromSoft cut the bullshit and focused on making every section somewhat memorable and worth exploring at the very least. 
base game Elden Ring did pretty well for the most part, but Mountaintops really offers nothing worthwhile to justify its existence. There's almost nothing to see there, and it's without a doubt the worst section to this very day. I've sprinkled this idea throughout the video by saying that it's okay to miss things, and part of what I am missing is the traditional non-open world style. Even if I did just dump some negativity on FromSoft's first attempt at an open world, my overall feelings are very positive to say the least. But just because my overall feelings of FromSoft's open world are more positive than negative doesn't automatically mean that I think they should only go open world with their Souls games. I think their Souls combat has evolved so much that it can function well in an open world style, but when they do different style games such as Sekiro, I don't think it needs to be open world just because it worked so well the first time. It took from software over a decade of refining their Souls system to achieve Elden Ring. Dark Souls 3 was definitely the point when they had nailed the system, but they needed a functioning jump button, and I'm sure adding that is easier said than done. And with not having an open world, we can focus more on quality. Having a 30 hour game definitely leads to a more quality focused experience, which usually entails less downsides. There's something I find extremely attractive, knowing that Miyazaki was able to inspect and refine almost every little detail of his game since it's not casting a super wide net like Elden Ring. And speaking of wide nets like Elden Ring, Elden Ring undeniably has a wide array of experiences. It has some really high highs with level design and beauty, but falls short with some of the lowest lows I have seen FromSoft hit in the last decade. Elden Ring's base game just kept going and going, and it got to the point where I could pinpoint areas and locations from Soft demanded higher quality expectations over other sections. I don't think many will argue that Altus Plateau is more interesting than Concentrated Snowfield or Mountaintops. That may sound like a blanket statement, but what FromSoft failed to do is make Mountaintops even slightly interesting. Cerulean Coast would be an example of Mountaintops done right, since it's a shorter trip that's far more attractive to explore with its vibrant beauty. I think most of us would agree other open world sections had more treatment, but FromSoft smoothed out the quality scale in Shadow of the Earth Tree, making it not so blatantly obvious which section of the map was the redhead stepchild. And when you can pinpoint the content that you deem what is worth doing and what isn't, you will develop mental notes on what content you have no desire to do again. This is going to piss a lot of people off, but so be it. Elden Ring is the only game that I have played where I have an extensive mental note on what content I am going to skip. Even with everything in Elden Ring being mostly handcrafted, I still have sections of the map that are dead to me. I have talked about what I find to be on the boring side already, but that's just the start of a long list. It all goes back to Elden Ring casting such a wide net that not every fish you catch in that net will be something that you enjoy. And I've enjoyed pretty much everything in FromSoft's past games besides Dark Souls 2. That statement isn't completely true, I need to elaborate on it a bit more. I won't be arguing Dark Souls 1 Slaughter Half is as good as the first. I also won't be defending the Poisonous Swamp in Dark Souls 3. But, FromSoft generally does a pretty good job at making each location worth my time. Sekiro and Bloodborne did this the best in my opinion, with there being essentially zero bits of content that I want to skip. The closest thing in Sekiro is Duo Guardian Ape, and who wouldn't be saying Chalice Dungeons in Bloodborne? Part of the nature with Elden Ring's wide net and skipping content is knowing the game well enough to justify why you do and don't like certain aspects of the game. If we look at the open world, it's knowing where to go and poor exploration rewards. But part of it is also how the open world only worked once for me. On every playthrough of Elden Ring that I have done, I thoroughly scour every polygon of the map and that playstyle definitely leads to me getting my time and money's worth for what's on offer. But my second playthrough is completely different and I know what wasn't enjoyable and I treat the open world as a beautiful canvas while my movement speed increase mod I call Torrent gallops me towards my next destination. And I want to reiterate this point again. I've never had to do this in any of FromSoft's games. Although I may be coming off as too negative because I definitely want to see FromSoft tackle an open world again. I think FromSoft has the recipe for an open world that I've never seen before. Charo's Hidden Grave and Cerulean Coast in the DLC were criticized for being mostly empty and lackluster. I don't think many will argue that sentiment, as the southern section of the map in the DLC is what I see being criticized the most. I do agree, these sections are less interesting than the others. But, I think an open world section being on the emptier side has a lot of potential that hasn't been fully tapped yet. I don't want to sell the narrative that I want zero worthwhile content and I think it's okay for the game devs to be lazy. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that a section on the emptier side can evoke certain thoughts and emotions that haven't been evoked yet. By the time you get to an emptier section of the map, you may reflect on your journey and the many hard-fought battles you partook in to actually be here. If every section was filled as Limgrave, your feelings and thoughts wouldn't change as the formula hasn't altered. The repetition may start to kick in faster as every player develops habits on how they explore. 
It's why I remember Foot of the Jagged Peak as well as I do. That was the first time Torrance earned my respect with how important he actually was to that area. He galloped past dragons and falling rocks while I was the hero trugging along with my trusty steed to fight Bale. With all of that being said, I think an emptier section of an open world that's as pretty as Cerulean Coast could work quite well if it was smacked down right before the final boss. It's the calm before the storm, and you can set the switch to autopilot and nestle yourself in the atmosphere right before the final boss makes everything stumble down like a game of Jenga. Now that we are here, we can all have a little bit of fun since you may not agree with everything that I have said, and I welcome that. Everything that I have said is nothing more than a subjective opinion, and I can definitely understand someone simply wanting more Elden Ring since it's easily one of their best games. But now we can speculate and talk a little bit about what we can have or what we would like to see. I will quickly start off by talking about the debunked leak, Spellbound. Even though this leak has been debunked, I would still like to see something like this come to fruition. I have spoken about this leak before, but I'll quickly give you the cliff note version of what it was. The image on your screen here was a supposed FromSoft leak with a game leading into a glintstone and magical setting. The bait on the hook for this game was Dark Souls 1's first half and Hogwarts Legacy having a baby. Think of a whole game being interconnected and ranged magic combat as your only option, similar to how Sekiro only gave you a melee combat option. Since this leak is debunked, there really isn't much of a point of elaborating any further, but when the early rumblings of this game were sprouting, I was quite intrigued. If you have been paying attention to the gameplay on your screen, I only do melee combat. So, having a FromSoft game forcing me to completely 180 my playstyle was automatically something that I was interested in. The idea of only ranged combat may drift a bit too far from what FromSoft wants to do, or can do with Souls-like games, so that idea may have been too good to be true. At the absolute bare minimum, Sekiro's combat is still on the table, and I think it would be an easy transition to go back to that system for their next game. Not only does pretty much everyone adore that game, but it's more liked than what you may remember. Steam reviews are by no means the go-to, end-all, be-all, I'm right, you're wrong, but Sekiro is reviewed at an overwhelmingly positive review score, which is higher than Elden Ring and all of From Software's prior games. Review scores are nothing more than a drop in the bucket because, we all know, total profit is what companies want to see first. That profit may be an easier grab than what you may expect, as there isn't a Sekiro competitor that's currently on the market. Liza P and Wolong Fallen Dynasty are the closest to a competitor, and both of these games are a bit different and, quite frankly, not as good as Sekiro. I, for one, absolutely adore Liza P, but it doesn't have the highs of Sekiro, and its level design is lacking, to put it very lightly. I didn't play more than an hour or two of Wolong, but I don't think that diehard Team Ninja fans view that as their best work. I would see discussions online talking about how Neo 2 is better or how Wolong is painfully mid. That game also didn't have strong legs as you can see here with the Steam player numbers looking a bit sad. The all-time peak of that game was 75,000 which, to be fair, is quite good, but two months later it barely topped a little over 1,000 players. I don't want this to become a rant on Team Ninja as I think they have some interesting work, so let's move on from that topic. The thing with a Sekiro 2 or a Sekiro spin-off is that it's already proven to work successfully once with Sekiro selling 10 million copies and winning Game of the Year in 2019. If From Software doesn't want to do another overhaul and deviate far from their roots, they can always go back to the drawing board with what made Bloodborne click. We will never see a From Software made Bloodborne 2 as the IP is in Sony's hands, and as of right now, Sony is pushing shitty, failing live service games and having graphical fidelity be their main showcase. But who said we couldn't have something similar? I mean, Dark Souls exists and Sony owns Demon Souls, so FromSoft could go back to that style if they really wanted to. At the absolute bare minimum, a Bloodborne spinoff may be their safest bet, as it doesn't alienate the Souls players that completely hate Sekiro style. Quite frankly, if you like Souls, you probably like Bloodborne, even if it's not your favorite. There is a lot of ideas I want to see with the gothic horror take that From Software can take advantage of. Bloodborne is still one of the best looking games I've had the pleasure to gawk at, as the atmosphere is so damn gripping, man. The good news with gripping art and atmosphere is Miyazaki himself. I believe that Miyazaki is a visionary. Pretty much everything he touches is gold, and he's never really let anyone down. So, the best thing I can say is something that may make me sound like a fool, and it's that I don't know what I want. Some people may see that as the speaker being dense, as you should know what you want, but I don't really see it that way. Everyone, at the end of the day, thinks a bit differently and has different ideas. When a piece of art, whether that be a game or my favorite piece of fiction, is such a radically fun and unexpected curveball, I remember those memories the most. 
If and when FromSoft gives me something that I didn't know I wanted, I will be sure to praise it. At the absolute bare minimum, if we do hear rumblings of what's to come sooner rather than later, I wouldn't be all that shocked. Sekiro released in March of 2019, and three months later in June, we got the reveal of Elden Ring. From Software definitely has a special sauce with working tightly and efficiently, so I don't think we will be in a super long hollowing. Three months after a stellar game release may even be too early, as we were all at the very end of the honeymoon phase, but hey, I won't be turning down the fun activities of theory crafting and speculation if they do show their next project somewhat soon. We also can't forget that From Software is no longer the Miyazaki led team anymore. We, of course, have Armored Core, but there's even more to it than that. Miyazaki was in an interview and he revealed the truth, saying that there are multiple projects in development that are not led by him. This video has been in regards to the Souls and Souls-like titles, but I think new directors and new brands in the pot is an absolute win for everyone, and the chances are very high that I give whatever they make an honest shot. Alright, let's end this video, and I'll say something that we can all agree on. I can understand if you want more Elden Ring, because I myself want more Elden Ring. I've made it abundantly clear in this video that I'd rather have something else in the spotlight before that happens, but it's not like I have zero desire to see FromSoft perfect their fantasy RPG system they've been working on since 2009. Just as a quick reminder, Miyazaki himself said that Elden Ring isn't even his ideal fantasy game. So me saying I want those ideas and that formula to forever be a shot case would be extremely selfish, rude, and foolish of me to say. And without a doubt, there are people who want more Elden Ring right now. Going back to the poll I put up, about 12% of voters want FromSoft to continue and simply make another Elden Ring. Who knows, maybe it's best for everyone if we don't get another fantasy open world game as their next big project. If Miyazaki thinks Elden Ring isn't his grand opus, then working on a different setting with different ideas could spark some magic with their next big open world project. I don't even think you have to think too hard about that, as Sekiro undoubtedly laid the foundation for some of Elden Ring's gameplay systems. FromSoft was able to test their own jump button, adding weapon arts to different weapons, and making a more open structure level design with the newfound mobility. At the very least, it gives time for FromSoft to let that sitting cook at low heat for a few minutes and throw in some new spices to see how it would turn out. I've also heard lore enthusiasts have, well, mixed feelings to say the least with Elden Ring's lore. They seem to speak highly of the stories and what is actually happening, but the overall closure and understanding of everything seems to leave a lot to be desired. It's never fun when your favorite story leaves so many open questions on the table knowing you will never see the answer. I also don't know why the lore was a bit harder for some to fully comprehend this time around. I always thought that it was George's involvement and from soft altering someone else's work was the obvious answer. But now it's time for myself to elaborate on a statement I said earlier in this video. I said that greed hasn't taken over Miyazaki and I think that's a fair compliment to give to someone. With Miyazaki being the president of From Software, he definitely has some say on how things will be run. FromSoft games don't have shitty microtransactions that we see in a lot of other games, but it's more than that. FromSoft have been at the very top of this Souls-like thing ever since the genre's birth all those years ago. Of course, not every decision they make is perfect, but they have had full market control this entire time. They, without a doubt, could have taken the eponymous Dark Souls IP and ran it to the ground like many other studios have done with once beloved IPs. I am sure you, yourself, have never seen an IP overstate its welcome just because it has brand recognition. FromSoft and Miyazaki do a pretty good job at letting creative endeavors flourish while simultaneously offering fair products in return. I find it to be a completely respectable stance Miyazaki has taken when he said that a manager position may not be the best fit for him. He's more or less saying he doesn't want to be a glooming eye on another person's vision. I think that's the most respectable stance he can take as he is without a doubt a game design genius and he doesn't want two visions potentially clashing. This has already happened once with From Software and it turned out to be a hot mess. Anyway, Elden Ring 2, Sekiro 2, or whatever else Miyazaki decides to tackle, I will be there. I think I would need a salesman to convince me that I am not stuck in a perpetuated wet dream if FromSoft took the direction of Sekiro's combat and Bloodborne's aesthetic, but I think I will be on the train for almost any project they decide to tackle. FromSoft is my favorite game dev in the modern era, and I essentially think everything they touch is nothing less than genius. And speaking of genius ideas, I am sure you lovely people who are watching this part of the video have thought of fun ideas you would like to see the Souls games and Souls-like genre do. So, if you don't want Elden Ring 2 quite yet, let's see the fun ideas you've thought of for FromSoft to tackle. Anyway, take care of yourselves, and thank you for watching the video.